eight ways British and American education systems are very different. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to check out and just see the eight different ways that our schools and your schools are different. So let's jump straight into this and see what we got, man. In America, they're all about their Latin. So honors are signified by phrases like cum loud, magna cum loud, cumulo nimbus, or cactus propolis. Huh? Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos Schools. pertains to education. Education. Before we get underway, some disclaimers. Britain is made up of three countries. England, Scotland and Wales, right. while the UK also includes Northern Ireland. Because each country has a separate education system operating under a different government, comparing British and American approaches could take as long as a doctoral programme. Fair enough. Therefore, when it comes to Britain, I'm going to focus on the country of my own schooling, England. For more details on the other countries, see my links in the description. Furthermore, some of the finer details of US education can vary by state, school district, and school. So for some things in today's video, there will be exceptions that prove the rule. Right, you know what? I already think of one massive eight ways our schools are different. Actually, no, it's education system, it's not school. I was gonna say yellow school buses, we don't have them, but... <laughs> Basically, sure, there's man. gonna be a part two. Ahead of his election victory in 1997, Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair summed up his political priorities with three words. Education, education, education. Right. The problem was, he didn't specify in what order. Schools in... The problem is, education don't actually teach you life skills. That's the problem. That is the... <laughs> I'm not here to cause a massive debate with schools, right? But listen, the, the thing that I've realised is when you leave school... You, you, you're in the real world and you're like, oh, damn. I didn't know the thing. What am I doing? What do I do with tax? What do I do with insurance? What do I do with this? What do I do with that? What? Bro, it's mad. You should learn this in school. I don't know, I don't know why they don't teach you these, these things. In England, date back to about the year 598. They were introduced by Augustine of Canterbury, who, like many in the 6th century, resembled a sketch of somebody from the 6th century. On the other hand, the first public school in America was the Boston Latin School. It was modelled after a grammar school okay. in Boston, England, and among its notable alumni was Benjamin Franklin. Interesting. History notes that he didn't actually graduate and quit the school at the age of 10, and he didn't even have a Nintendo Switch. Wow. Fast forward to 2020, and today's kids haven't got a clue where the word <laughs> fast forward comes from. But also, those kids, like us before them, are cogs in an educational machine that has been worked and refined for hundreds of years. Except, on either side of the pond, that machine is a different make and yeah. model. In fact, English and American education is very different. As somebody who was schooled the English way, but married an American teacher, I'm going to take a look at... Yeah, this is going to be super interesting, actually. ...those differences. Uniforms. Before we look at the education life cycle, let's talk about one of the most striking visual we differences always have to between wear English tie. and American schools. Uniforms. In the United States, most schools don't require one. Brits like me oh. know this because we've seen Saved by the Bell. You're so lucky. Bro, shirt and tie uniform is so uncomfortable and horrible. I wish I could just be like in joggers and a plain top and just be relaxed. But that doesn't give us the whole picture. American schools do enforce a dress code. This varies by school, but in general, you might see kids wearing things like khakis and polo shirts. You know, basically anything oh, okay. worn by 55-year-old professionals called Scott. <laughs> There's typically no requirement that these clothes have to match from student to student. And while right. some private schools do require uniforms, this is the exception that proves the rule. In England, everything's flipped, and I'm not just talking about the roads. 90% of English schools require pupils to wear identical yep. uniforms. Think hog- In fact, I, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Bro, it's even worse, right? Luckily, I didn't have to wear a blazer during my school time, right? We had like an optional jumper, but bro, when I left school, they all had to start wearing these blazers. And apparently, like, they wasn't even allowed to take them off, even when it was boiling hot. Like, what? Bro, that's mad! Hogwarts without all the fun stuff. And what's fascinating is, there's no government mandate for schools to do this. They just 
do it. It really makes me wish I'd put forth a more Weird. vociferous protest against the autocratic infrastructure of my school when I was five. But we <laughs> all have regrets. Great. It's true that both countries employ a numbering system to denote a child's educational development. Oh, yeah. In England, this is measured by year and in America by grade. And there's a slight difference in how this plays out. England's numbering system is always one higher than America's. So, for example, English kids in year two are the same age as American kids oh. in the first grade. And this is the same all the way up to year 13 slash 12th grade. This doesn't mean that English schools randomly hold children back a year. It just means that the English year one serves the same purpose as America's kindergarten. Right. On the whole, English and American kids attend school between about five and 18. But that's not the entire story. Even before all of this, there's a two-year warm-up session. True preschool, Between like nursery three and preschool. And five, when children still can't do easy stuff like order pizza or filter spreadsheets, parents in both countries have them sent off to something called preschool. And instead of getting punished for their abject lack of ability, they're rewarded with free playtime. Madness. <laughs> Except in England, we don't normally call it preschool. Nursery. This period is broken up into what is known as nursery yep. and reception year. Confusingly... Man, nursery was good. Nursery was good. All I got to do was play, uh, finger pain, 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 play more with toys, eat food, no worries about life. <laughs> it was good. Reception year is technically the first year of school and year one is the second year. Among other things, this explains why I'm so bad at maths. Elementary. In America, the school where children advance to next is known as elementary. But to English okay. people, that's just a word that Sherlock Holmes uses when he wants to be condescending. <laughs> this period of education is where children from the ages of about 6 to 11 are first introduced to the broad range. Okay, so your elementary school is our primary school. ...of knowledge they'll need to succeed in life. So handling basic arithmetic, developing spelling ability and explaining grass stains. In England, schools handling this period of primary education are right. known as primary schools. But in America, primaries are a series of state elections for nominating a party candidate, which occur roughly every week forever. And then there's the average class size. In the US, the average class size Ooh. for self-contained elementary classes is about 22. Okay, it's kind of similar. That out loud, I can already hear the laughter from teachers in states where the average is much higher. For instance, Utah, where it's 27. As it happens, though, 27 is the national average for English primary Oh, schools. really? This was even the case when I was at school back in seven. Yeah, I would say that I'd say all my classes were in like the 20s. 1782. What did he say? Total average for English primary schools. This was even the case when I was at school back in 1782. Bro, I thought I was tripping. 1782. <laughs> who are you, Doctor Who? <laughs> Good on it. In the United States, middle school is an alternate dimension that exists between elementary school and high school education. See, this is why I get confused with America's school system, right? You got elementary, then you got middle school and high school. I, I can't like quite figure out what years, like how is it equivalent to us over in the UK? Because we have nursery, primary and secondary. And the best way to explain it is, Nursery is from like two to five. Primary is from like ages five to 11. And then secondary is from like ages 11 to 16, something like that. This dark underworld of sorcery is where teachers become locked in a battle of wits against a hive mind of monsters known as eighth graders. The average class size for departmentalized instruction is about 25, okay. which only adds an extra layer to this already cruel hellscape. <laughs> In England, it goes... Wait, he says 8th grade is our year 9. So that's around uh, 11, 12 year olds. It's like this. The upside down is known generally as secondary school. Right. Mercifully, the average class size is about... Is known general hellscape. In England, it goes like this. The upside down is known generally as secondary school. 
mercifully, the average class size is about 22. But yep. while this nightmarish period of education, as with the United States, roughly encompasses the age of 11 to 14, it doesn't end there. 11 to 14? In England, it drags on for another two years. All right, yeah, 11 to 16. age-wise with America's freshmen and sophomore years of high school, which, by the way, brings us on to this. Oh, is that what it is? I, I I'm rewinding here because I'm really trying to like, understand it because I've never been, I've never been able to understand the systems. On for another two years, coinciding age-wise with America's freshmen and sophomore years. Of so your freshman and sophomore is our further two years in second in secondary school. So 15 year olds and 16 year olds. Right. Okay. Okay. Got it. High school, which by the way brings us on to this. High school. Ah, oh, yes, high school. In the United States, this is a period of education from the ages of about 14 to 18. After right. freshman and sophomore year comes grade 11 or junior year and grade 12, senior year. This is typically when the students begin their development into humans. It's so confusing, honestly. Like, you not being in America are, pro are definitely not confused, right? But for, for me trying to understand it, there's so many, bro, and it's so split up. Ours is literally nursery, primary, secondary, college, university, right? Nursery, two to five years old. Primary, five to 11. Secondary, 11 to 16. And then college, 16 to 18, university, 18 to 21. But like, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's confusing the hell out of me, I ain't gonna lie. But it's also where most students take their SATs, a series of tests to determine readiness for college. These are not to be confused with the English SATs or SATs, which are assessments taken by seven and 11 year olds. <laughs> in England, it is a similar process, but by a different name. And before keyboard warriors like Uncle Toby start writing in all caps that we have high schools in the UK, I know we do. But to keep things simple, do that we? same period of schooling is typically structured like this. Age-wise, the last two years of secondary school are to England what freshman and sophomore years are to America. Right. This is when pupils across the country take GCSE tests in all this. See, I'm glad I watched this video now because I've seen so many like movies and like TV shows and stuff where they mention like, oh, he's a freshman, oh, he's a sophomore. And I was sat there like, oh, but, like what, how, I don't know how old he is or whatever because I don't understand. But I understand now, freshman, years 10 and 11, sophomore, 10 and 11, okay, cool. Freshman and sophomore years are to America. This is when pupils across the country take GCSE tests in all their subjects to determine suitability for further qualifications. Yep. Meanwhile, the English age equivalents of junior and senior year take place in what is known as sixth form or college. Right. This is the point in education where we stop. When so your junior and senior is our college or sixth form okay wearing uniforms and start dressing like john travolta <laughs> it's also where we study two or three chosen specialized subjects as yep. part of our a levels for me this was english history and theater studies because that's how you become a youtube sensation <laughs> The results of these tests determine your suitability for university. They're often compared to America's advanced placement exams. Right. But while both help to determine a student's path in higher education, they're not entirely the same thing. That being said, higher education does come with its own differences. Higher education. In the US, college means something entirely different. It's the general catch-all term for an institution of higher education. In England, this is referred to as university. Or yeah, I was going to say, he's making it sound a lot more confusing right there. Your college is our university. Or uni, because everything devolves into slang at some point. Of course, specific institutions in both countries play hard and fast with this rule. See, for example, Harvard University and Imperial College London. For American students, a bog standard bachelor's degree takes four years to complete, while in England, unless I, you know, somehow skipped a year, which is entirely plausible in hindsight, a bachelor's degree typically lasts three years. Upon completion, yeah. students in both countries can graduate with honors. The difference though, is how this is printed on a degree transcript. In England, Bachelor of Arts or BA might be followed by the word honors or ons because see previous comment about slang. In America, they're all about their Latin. So honors are signified by phrases like cum laude, magna cum laude, huh? cumulonimbus or cactus pricolus. 
Bro, why these are sound like Harry Potter characters, bro. <laughs> Like any good teacher, I've left the best bit until the end of class. It wouldn't right. be America and England if they weren't separated by a common language. So let's take a rapid fire look at the differences in educational terminology. As we've already seen, you've got grade versus year, but you've also got semester versus term. While America right. has its students, England has its pupils. Oh wait, yeah, we do say pupils. Student, why do I? I, I would say students now. I wouldn't say pupils. I, I said pupils during school. But after that, I would just be like students. Versus term. While America has its students, England has its pupils. Whether or not they attend elementary school or primary school, high school or college or college or uni, there's a good chance they'll have to study math yep. or maths. And in England, we don't take tests. We take exams. Oh, yeah. In the UK, we don't say math. We always say maths. In England, a rubber erases a mistake. In America, it prevents one. And speaking of words that have different meanings, let's finish today's class and or module by talking about two words that... Per wait, I, wait, 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 I'm so slow. Oh my God, I'm so slow. I literally just... Wait, bro, did he just say... <laughs> he, says, he just said, your eraser in America, in the UK, it's a rubber, whereas in America, a rubber is where you erase, prevent a mistake. Oh my God. Or college or uni, there's a good chance they'll have to study <laughs> math or maths. And in England, we don't take tests, we take exams. In England, a rubber erases a mistake. In yep. America, it prevents one. Oh, that's and a per that's of words perfect. That have different meanings. I can't believe I didn't get that straight away. I'm so dumb right now. Let's finish today's class and or module by talking about two words that perennially cause confusion. Public school. In the United right. States, a public school is one that is publicly funded and free for students to attend. Same. In 2016, more than 70% of students were publicly educated in the US as opposed to privately educated. In England, a public school is something different. In the late huh? 1800s, the term public was used in the sense of these schools being open to pupils of any locality, denomination, or paternal trade. Basically, anyone whose parents could afford it. So, an English public school is a private school. A publicly funded school, on the other hand, is called a state school, which has nothing to do with state universities in America. It's all, it's all confusing, and I've lost my train of thought. Ah, saved by the bell. That's it for this. Wait, 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 wait. I'm so confused right there. Bro, our public school in the UK is the same as America. I've never, what did he, what did he, I've never heard anyone in the UK call a school state school, ever. There's no way I'm wrong with this. We call our schools in the UK public schools. Huh? which has nothing to do with state universities in America. It's all, it's all confusing and I've lost my train of thought. Okay, I'm confused. Ah, saved by the bell. That's it for this episode. Thank you for joining. Really interesting though. Learned a lot in that video. Really helpful. I wish I watched this video a few years ago when I was watching like all the American shows. Always been confused with the school systems and what it was called. Like watching TV shows, they'll always say the name and stuff and I'm like, what year is that? Yeah, really good video. Enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, make sure you thumbs up, subscribe for more content. Let me know if I missed anything in the comment section. I'm also live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.